Nah. It's not too late to start a gaming channel on YouTube. Every year for nearly a decade, people keep saying it's impossible. It's oversaturated. Hot take. You can actually start today and still get thousands of views and subscribers on your channel. It takes time either way, so why not start now? So right now, I'm going to outline a process for you so you can start your gaming channel off right. But just know, some things may not be the easiest to hear. Establishing your game of choice is usually the first thing that's on your mind when you start a gaming channel. Two things that I like to look for in gaming channels are, do you enjoy playing the game? And is there a decent following for said game? You could definitely play a game like Call of Duty, but should you? Probably not. There's a big balance between playing something that you like and something that also has a little bit of popularity. So if you wanna grow, then you gotta be able to make those decisions. And one of those decisions is choosing the right game. Whatever game you choose is important because seriously, you will spend hundreds to thousands of hours playing this one game to build an audience. You don't want to be going crazy while you do so. I'm not saying you always have to play this one game, but you kind of have to play it until you get a little bit of traction. Keep that in mind. The other part of this is choosing a game that is somewhat popular, but not too popular. If you choose a too popular game, then it's gonna be hard for people to find you when your competition is absolutely stacked. If no one plays your game, then no one watches your game. And if no one watches your game, then your ceiling for growth is extremely low. But like I said, games like Call of Duty and Minecraft will never have this problem. They'll have the opposite problem. The problem where there's too much people watching and there's too many people creating and you're gonna get buried. There's a balance between picking Uber franchises like Call of Duty and Minecraft or picking this old school horror game or this 10 cent themed thrift store type game is a balance and you have to know where you fit in that balance. But don't worry, we have a few methods that we're gonna show you in just a second on how to prospect these kinds of games. A Couple of different ways to find your niche for a video game channel, this is one of them. You can go to steampowered.com slash charts and you can actually see a bunch of different charts that talk about the most played games, the top selling games, the popular weekly and monthly games. But what I like to do is I like to go to the most played and I like to see all. And now you can see what the peak of today is and what the amount of current players that are playing it. And as you can see, Counter-Strike 2, most popular, Dota, PUBG, and so on and so forth. So this can help you decide what kind of game you should be focusing on. You can find some new games like Mirror 4, may not be new, but I've definitely never heard of it. And it actually has a decent player base. It's ranked 33 on Steam and the PC community is very large. So just use this as a guide to give you some insights into players that are actively paying attention to certain games like RimWorld, whatever the heck that is. There's 19,000 players playing it today. That's something to take note of. If you want something a little more trendy, you can even go for the weekly charts. So for October 31st, all the way to November 7th, the most played games are actually, again, Counter-Strike, Call of Duty, could have figured that, War, Thunder, Ark, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, even Cyberpunk's on here. So probably because of the Phantom Liberty expansion. So you get the idea. Like you can use these charts to figure out which games are popular and which ones are a little less popular and those are the ones that you probably wanna target. Another way of finding a potential niche is also tr checking out the uh, PlayStationTimeTracker.com. And this allows you to see, minus all the ads, uh, allows you to see what kind of games are being played on the PlayStation side of things. So if you're a console gamer or you're wanting to hit that particular type of audience, there's another good way of doing that. You can see games like EA Sports FC, rest in peace FIFA, uh, Rocket League, Apex, those are pretty big games always, uh, Overwatch, Rust, Diablo. I mean, there's a bunch of games here that you definitely would have heard of, um, but even games like Brawlhalla technically get a decent, you know, get some decent numbers and it's a very 
very uh, small game in comparison to some of these other ones. Even Ghost of Tsushima gets some views. Here's another way that you can do that. You can use this and you can even update it per platform. What about PS5? Let's see, what's PS5 looking like? So I mentioned the PlayStation tracking side of it. On the Xbox and Microsoft side of it, you can actually just go to their most played game section. And in this section, you'll see some general charts for, hey, these games are played more often than others. Now, this is a little bit less scientific than the previous ones, as they don't have the view counts available for you. So most likely these are gonna be just newer games. But even still, there might be some games that you hadn't really heard of, like War Thunder, for instance. No offense to War Thunder fans. But and finally, the last thing, another little more scientific method is Google Trends. Using Google, the biggest search engine and literally the, the backer to YouTube can really help you figure out kind of how popular something is over a given time. So let me give you an example. Let's type in Call of Duty, right? We're gonna type in Call of Duty and we're just gonna see how much this has been searched. And you can see this interest over time. And, you, and it looks like this one is all for November 7th, November 8th. And you can see timestamps just across the board. Now the way this works, because I know this looks weird, like, oh wait, only 61 searches for Call of Duty in the world? No way. The way this works is each number is on a scale of zero to 100. And, and the closer you get to 100, the more popular it is. And so that means the 62 is actually, 65 is pretty considerable in terms of popularity. And then you, of course you have these massive, massive spikes over here. I can't even see this stupid thing of like a hundred search. It means it's searched a lot at 4.20 AM on November 8th. So you can do this and you can also filter and buy the past seven days and see a completely different chart. You can even filter by the last 12 months. And what I would recommend is you do something sort of similar to past 90 days. And that way you can kind of see a bit of a better graph for how it's been treated in the past, but not too far in the past that it would affect your decision-making. So for some reason, this date in October, October 30th had a ton of in a ton of ton of searches at, at a perfect 100 score, probably because maybe they dropped the trailer that day or something. So this is really good for getting a handle on analysis and market trends and when a game or when something goes popular and when it doesn't. As you can see throughout most of this period, it's pretty dead, but then now it's really starting to pick up, probably closer to a launch or something like that. So to try something different, I went ahead and typed in Apex Legends. I put it for the past 30 days and you'll see another fun feature about this is I can actually scroll down and I can see, you know, who's searching it, but I can also see what the related topics are and the related queries. So apparently a lot of people are searching for Apex Legends season 19 content. And I assume Conduit is a type of, is a, is a character in the game that they're releasing, uh, a new player, new playable character. And so you can actually change these to be the top searches or the rising searches. So as you can see, Apex Legends season 19 patch notes and Ignite Apex Legends and even Post Malone for some reason uh, are all breaking out search wise. It means they're getting really popular more recently. So these are kind of terms that you can use to help figure out what kind of content and YouTube that you're gonna be doing for gaming. Do the same thing over here for related topics. Of course, this isn't going to be as accurate because you're going to see things like electrical conduit and doppelganger and Filipino and fan art. And I don't understand why those are there, but you could always switch it back to top and kind of see the breakdown of such things, right? So you know that those things are going to be less than Apex Legends. So you know the search isn't super diluted. You could compare these things to, if I were to compare it to Call of Duty, I can. And now you can see a fun little handy dandy graph and you can see that Call of Duty is just immensely more popular in the past 30 days. And you can see that the different states, you can see, you can see, right, you can see the search terms. 
So this is just really gonna help inform your decision making about what you should be doing. If your game of choice is not that popular or you didn't really see anything from the list, that's okay. Because you can still make a small, very strong community out of not a lot of players. But right now we're trying to focus on maximizing your channel and your potential. Another thing you really need to establish before you get too far into this is your viewer demographic. Certain games have certain ages and certain demographics of players that play them. This is important to know because you're gonna kinda tailor your energy and your style towards that audience that dominates that game. It's important to understand that if you're doing Minecraft videos, you're going to be enlisting a younger-ish audience. Minecraft also has a diverse gender profile when it comes to their player base, where women and females are, are taking up over 30% share in the Minecraft player community. With gaming being more and more diverse every single year, bear demographic numbers in your head when you're making your style of content and choosing that game. You don't wanna alienate large portions of your audience because it's gonna really limit your potential and also just make you seem like kind of a jerk. Don't be a jerk. Another thing that's super important about choosing your game and your audience is knowing your competitors. These are gonna be the people that are gonna be around you at all times making content possibly similar to yours, and also are gonna be your inspirations for your own content. They're gonna know what's worked and what didn't, and you're gonna be the one to see those ideas played out and be like, okay, I can make something awesome from a collage of these creators that I'm inspired by. Say you wanna do GTA 5 role-playing as your content. I highly recommend you go and take notes on three to six different content creators in that space. Preferably the biggest ones, because they would have had the most trial and error throughout their content making. No, seriously, get out a Google Doc, get out a notepad or get out a spreadsheet or something and take notes on the following question. Did they script out the content ahead of time? Do they focus on fewer interactions or random occurrences or both during it? Are they doing educational content or entertainment content? What appeals to you when you watch them? And also, what are some things you don't like about their content? All of these questions and more are vital for you to assess so you know what the heck you're doing. Some games are far more niche and have less channels to pull inspiration from and then that's where you gotta get really creative. But generally speaking, you could still use kind of the same strategy. Now that you have a general idea on what you're doing, let's go ahead and establish those content streams and angles of your content. After your analysis, you gotta start setting up your channel, setting up your infrastructure. You gotta choose a name, you gotta get a logo done, you gotta get some basic text in the bio, your about section, your metadata, and whatever it is for your videos. You gotta get all that stuff filled out. But you don't have to be extremely detailed right now. The most important thing is to get through that step, the really boring admin steps, so you can get right into your content. If you need some help with the branding part, send me a message, that's what we do. When you got that stuff down, hopefully you have some sort of idea on which direction you wanna go specifically in the entertainment or educational categories. I would recommend educational content. Highly searchable, you're gonna be providing immediate value for people, long-term value, because usually educational content can be pretty evergreen, meaning it will keep getting views long after you're done hitting record. Some gaming channels I have worked with or been friends with that have been successful have done things like finding Easter eggs, showing you where they are, doing character builds and loadouts, creating lore videos or history focused videos, creating guides on how to beat certain bosses or missions. These are all educationally minded content pieces that are highly searchable and they will be searched for as long as the game has any sort of relevancy, which if it's a good game, if you picked right, then it could be relevant for several years. This kind of content is really easy to record because you can easily script it out, easily plan it. You don't have to have the pressure of like live streaming it to get your content. You don't have to be exceptionally funny or cool or crazy or whatever. A lot of it is really down to your skill level and your editing and your scripting, which honestly is really nice because you can 
take as much time as you want to do that stuff. But when you're sitting in front of the camera, in front of a live audience, and they expect a certain performance level out of you, that makes things a lot harder. So there is an advantage, especially to doing the educational side of the content, but there is another way. The entertainment route is really tough. Part of the reason why it's so tough is because you gotta have a personality that's engaging. And you also need to really think about how you can put yourself in situations that elicit emotional responses. Responses that like fear, if you're playing a scary game. How can you put yourself in a situation to get super scared? Or if you're like super good at the game, then how can you get as many kill streaks in a row so your audience is in awe on how you play? Entertainment relies so much on emotion, and without this emotion, people are just gonna be like, well, why am I here? So it's up to you to figure out how to either fabricate those situations or put yourself in those situations naturally in such a way that provokes anger, sadness, you know, laughter, so your audience is constantly entertained. That being said, I would still super recommend the educational route because you're giving them value up front, no strings attached, they consume it, and then they can decide what they want to do. They don't have to sit here and ponder on whether you're funny enough or not to subscribe. They're gonna subscribe to you because you gave them something valuable immediately out of the gate. Let's go back to some of those YouTubers you were taking notes on before. Earlier, I stated that you should write notes on three to six YouTubers and you should see what kind of content they're doing. And then you should also take versions of that content for yourself and collage it together to make your own new content. What you need to remember is that basically any creative work imaginable has had inspiration in the past from something. Doesn't have to be the same niche or industry, doesn't have to be the same wording or visuals, but every single thing has had inspiration from another thing. It is not plagiarism or anything like that. As long as you are getting enough of a sample size, enough of a pool of inspiration that you can collage stuff together and you can make a new heart. You're transforming it. You're making it your own. You're changing the meaning of all of these different things that you're taking from and you're putting your own spin on it. I have personally been on teams and worked with clients who have massive YouTube channels and they do this very thing. They literally pay to research and develop new content strategies, new content ideas. And it's not like this is a foreign concept. If you go to youtubejobs.co, or if you go to even Mr. Beast's like jobs posting thing, they talk about this. They talk about ideation, how to come up with new ideas and stuff. And I guarantee you with certainty, they are looking at what's working on YouTube in different sectors, and they're seeing how many people are doing it, and they're finding outliers, and they're mixing their stuff together and applying it to what they do and then obviously cranking it up if you know the concept was done by a smaller channel and they're a bigger channel more resources etc if you try to take one person's thing that you see and try to pass it off as your own that's super scummy super plagiarism so make sure that you're doing a lot of inspirations and combining that stuff together make sense if you have a question about that feel free to comment below or hit me up again. Would love to talk about this with you. I've spent a lot of time talking about this. Let's move on. It's not just the video ideas that, you know, you should be taking notes on but from your competitors. It's also the titles and the thumbnails. What sets you apart from your competition? You're gonna need to be thinking about storyline. Storylines in your content, how you go about your content. Start by having a general guideline or premise for that video and then write down how you're gonna present it to your audience. Then you can plan a sequence of events to cause that interaction and develop those plot points. Let me give you an example of an idea that I thought of recently. Challenging yourself to be the first one to do something is another good way to set yourself apart. Say you love to play a game like No Man's Sky. Pretty fun game, I just started playing it myself. It has a moderate amount of popularity, but it's a little aged at this point. There are a few channels that cover this game, but generally the content I've noticed is a lot of just people praising the game for how it's been redeveloped over the years. 
I don't see a lot of people doing skits or entertaining like theater type stories in No Man's Sky. That could be a really interesting content angle that could set you apart from someone else. The most difficult thing about starting a gaming channel though is losing your patience. Losing your patience and not giving stuff a fair chance. It's not common that the first video you put out is gonna be an absolute banger. It's also not common that it's going to reach any sort of real audience. So what I like to recommend to people is when you find an idea that you like, make it a series. Not like a sequential series, but just a make eight to 10 videos about that particular topic or style. That way you have a good quality test for, hey, like, does YouTube know I make this kind of content? And if it does, and it's not pushing the content, then maybe I should look elsewhere. But see, YouTube is really bad for instant gratification. So after you make those 10 videos, preferably one a week if you can, then you should be doing 10 more videos in a different side of that niche. By the time you finish the second batch of 10 videos, your first batch will have decent analytics to show you how it worked or didn't. Now you can look back at that first batch while you're making your third batch and determine, okay, what did I do right? What did I do wrong? Where should I pivot? What content worked? So don't freak out if you make a video that's a one of 10. It could easily drop down to a 10 of 10 and vice versa. A 10 of 10 in the first week could become a one of 10 later on. You just don't know. And so you can't, you know, fiddle around and sit there at the, at the control seat and be like, ah, let's hit all the buttons and make something work right. No, post your content and then immediately move on. You could come back in a few months and see if that content did anything and make adjustments, but you're never gonna learn or get anywhere unless you start doing it. Patience and dedication to consistency is absolutely everything for YouTube. But don't be bothered by not getting an instant view count, sub count, recognition or anything. Stay the course, keep improving, and keep putting out videos and you will absolutely reach where you wanna go. Since packaging is super important for streamers specifically, if you are a streamer looking to make new content and you don't know where to start, then feel free to grab our free stream overlay and learn more about how to set it up in this video above my head. And then there's also this video, which is probably gonna be more of a surprise. See you in the next one.